الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Surely all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, the sustainer and the controller of all that happens in the universe and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger his family, his companions and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time my dear brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh on Monday we discussed the, the importance of the aqidah, the belief of the individual. And we saw then that our belief is what makes us who we are and what we are. Whatever we do or we don't do, all of these are motivated by the belief we have. And so it is important to have the right belief because that in turn will motivate a person to do or not to do and as we've seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we would say he took the time to nurture within the minds of the people at that time the correct belief of himself subhanahu wa ta'ala and eventually when they had this correct understanding and perception of God, it was now easy for them to accept and to implement whatever God commanded. So the key is the aqidah. Uh, what I would like to share with you today is a question I was asked uh, a few weeks ago by a sister. Uh, and this question made me realize how important it is for every Muslim to have uh, some grasp and some knowledge of what exactly a Muslim is supposed to believe in. Uh, the sister asked me, and alhamdulillah in talking with the sister about this issue, it turns out, uh, you know, she's not doing anything wrong, but she said she was just thinking about this from a purely what we call a theoretical angle. She asked me and she said, would it be okay for a Muslim sister who is looking to get married but can't seem to find the right Muslim brother? All right, she, as she puts it, many brothers have issues these days. And she said, is it, would it be okay if the sister were to find a non-Muslim person who seems to be okay and uh, get married to that person? And so I had to let her know that marriage in Islam is not just a, a social thing. It is partly that, but it is also worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think, brothers and sisters, if we begin to see whatever we do, besides the salah and the siyam and the sadaqat and so on, as ibadah, perhaps our perspective will be different. And that's what we need to do, actually. The Prophet والسلام, and this message of Islam changed the perspective and understanding that people had of religion and of God and worship. In most religions, religion is delegated or segregated to certain rituals you perform every now and then. Islam is perhaps the only religion that provides a different perspective, and that is worship of God is not just a bunch of rituals you practice every now and then, but it is everything you do or you don't do in your life. This is the recognition of Allah. This is what worship of Allah is all about. Acknowledging and recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything we do. So we avoid what is haram because we are aware that it is haram. And we do what is permissible because we are conscious that this is what God has allowed. This is worship of God. Making decisions, conscious decisions every day about all matters in life. 
based on this recognition of God Almighty and the legislation and the laws and the do's and don'ts that he has revealed. So marriage is not just a social event, a social thing where you marry someone and you know hopefully you have some children and that's it. Because the sister also uh, added, you know, what if this person says, look, you know what, children, raise children however you want. I have no problems. Or, you know, both uh, parties decided for whatever reasons they may not uh, have children. Whether or not this would still be allowed in Islam. So marriage, as everything else, is worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as such, we are obligated as Muslims. Of course, we are, we are free to choose to do otherwise. But being true Muslims, we are obligated to stay within the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated and prescribed. And on this issue in particular, in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 221, and this is a verse you might want to, to bear in mind, because in this society, this question will come up a lot. Why aren't Muslims allowed to marry non-Muslims? Well, this issue was discussed in this ayah, and the reason was given, subhanAllah. Allah has given us that reason. <coughs> he didn't leave it up to us to guess as to what the reason might be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off by saying, وَلَا تَنْكِحُ الْمُشْرِكَاتِ حَتَّى يؤمن. Do not marry the disbelieving women until they believe. حَتَّى يؤمن. Until they believe. وَلَا أَمَةٌ مُؤْمِنَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِّن مُشْرِكَةٍ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَتْكُمْ Indeed, a slave woman. Of course, these days, slavery does not exist or, well, it doesn't exist in the, in the sense that we know it. But nevertheless, the issue of a, a person being a slave or a free person may not be much of an issue these days. But in those days, it was an issue. It was a, 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 an issue that society lived and faced. Allah says, indeed, the, the, the slave woman who was a believer is better than the free woman who was not a believer, even though she may appeal to you. And that is the biggest problem with us brothers and sisters. See, when, when we are enticed and we're seduced, what we do after that, we try to bend and twist Islam in every which way to accept and to justify this seduction and this temptation. That's the reality. SubhanAllah. Law says that the slave woman, if, if she's a believer, is better than the free woman if she's not a believer, even though she may entice you and appeal to you. Then Allah says, وَلَا تُنْكِحُوا الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَتَّى يُؤْمِنُوا do not marry your women folk, your daughters, your girls, to the disbelieving men. Indeed, a slave man, a slave who is a male, a man, who but a believer, is better than the free man, who is a disbeliever, although he may again entice you and uh, comes across as appealing to you. Then Allah tells us why, brothers and sisters. Allah says, Ula'ika yad'una ila nar. Those people, meaning the disbelievers, they invite you to the hellfire. They invite you to the hellfire. In any case, if you look at the realities of living with a spouse who is not Muslim, in particular, a Muslim woman living with a spouse who is not Muslim, the challenges she faces are tremendous. To begin with, she, the Muslim wife, is being put under the control of a husband who is not Muslim. Of course, you're going to have problems. Because if one spouse does not believe in the same things as the, as the other spouse, there will be major problems, major clashes. In any case, how can two people truly become close when one may detest the belief and practices of the other? Doesn't make sense. Allah says, those people, the disbelievers, all they invite you to the hellfire with their disbelief and with their uh, 
perspective that anything goes, it's the human being who decides what's good and what's not good, what's right and what's not right. And as a result, there are many things that are acceptable to a non-Muslim that will not be acceptable to a Muslim. Because as Muslims, we take our do's and don'ts from what Allah has ordered or legislated. We don't make them up as we go along, although some of us do sometimes. But for the average non-Muslim, they have no concept of halal and haram like we do. Like we do. And so, everything or almost anything goes for them. So Allah says, they invite you to the hellfire. Is that what you want? You may have some enjoyment now, yes? Because Allah says, even though they entice you, right? They, they appeal to you. So there is, or there might be some enjoyment. Then Allah says, Wallahu yad'u ila al-jannati wal maghfirati bi-ithni. So those people, Allah says, invite you to the fire, while Allah invites you ila al-jannat, to paradise, wal maghfirati bi-ithni, and to forgiveness by His will and by His permission. So which choice would we make? And the choice is ours. The choice that leads us to the hellfire or the choice that leads us to paradise and forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the matter is clear. You know, this issue is not uh, man-made legislation. It is a divine commandment. And so like everything else, our, our lives, brothers and sisters, everything we do, we may not realize this. We may not realize this. But everything we do is ibadah of Allah or should be. Look, the Prophet والسلام, said that even a piece of food that a husband puts in the mouth of his wife is sadaqah for him. Sadaqah. And you and I know what sadaqah is. It's not just a, an act of kindness that he shows his wife. It is a deed that is worship of Allah. You're rewarded for it. That's the bottom line. You're rewarded for it. It's a good deed that you're going to be rewarded for. That's what it is. So it's not just some kindness that the husband is showing his wife and it will make their relationship better. That, all of that will happen, of course. But in addition to that, by, being, by the Prophet ﷺ describing it as sadaqah, we also know that the person will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. Now here's the thing. That piece of food that the husband puts in the mouth of his wife, where does he get that? He works, he has a job, he works, and he earns his salary. And with that, he's able to provide food for his family. So the fact that putting a piece of food in the mouth of his wife is sadaqah also indicates that going to work in order to earn a living is worship of Allah. So we may not realize this, but every day, mashaAllah, all the things we do, or most of the things we do, it should be worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and as such, we should not think, well, you know what, I'm free to just decide on my own. Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us a lot of freedom for, uh, of choice and flexibility to choose. But nevertheless, our choices still come within the limits that are halal, and we should not cross that line. We should not cross that line. So we need to begin to look at our lives and the things we do every day from this new perspective. That it is worship of Allah. And subhanAllah, if we realize this, then for even the things you and I do in which we derive pleasure, brothers and sisters, even in those things, we would be worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's just a matter of looking at it from the right perspective. And this is why Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, when he defined ibadatullah, worship of Allah, what it is, he said, uh, Al-ibadah ismun jami' li kulli ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardahu min qawlin wa fi'l. He said that the, the term ibadah, worship of Allah, is a collective or encompassing term that includes everything that Allah loves and is pleased with. Whether it is a statement you make or something you do. The flip side of this definition, brothers and sisters, is that if a person 
ensures that whatever he or she is doing is not something that is uh, displeasing to Allah, then that person is actually in the worship of Allah. We may not realize this. When you take your kids, brothers and sisters, uh, you know, in the evening time to the park, it is not just an hour of relaxation and you know some some healthy exercise in terms of walking and get some fresh air. It is that, but it is also worship of Allah. Why? Because you're not doing something that is displeasing to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That's the bottom line. So may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless us. May He open up our hearts and our minds so so that we can understand this wonderful reality of what worship to Him really means. And as you can see, when we have this understanding, then we understand how Islam is a way of life, as opposed to a set of rituals you, we practice every now and then. It's a way of life. We have to live it. So may Allah open our hearts and minds so that we can uh, understand this and see this. May He also inspire and motivate us to hold firmly to this message and to live by it. May He forgive for us our mistakes and shortcomings, and may He keep us all firm on the straight path. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته